Hello, my friends, and welcome to the Out of Your Body Experience. My name is Anna, and I will be your host today. Here, we will learn how our bodies work by solving some medical mysteries. Now, to do this, we first want to get a sense of what our bodies are made of. On a very small level, on a microscopic level, they are made of trillions of cells. Now, each of these itty bitty teeny tiny cells has their own job to do, like moving oxygen around the body or making up your muscles. Now, when a bunch of cells come together, we call that a tissue. Examples of this are muscle tissue, your skin, things like that. Now, once we start putting tissues together, we're able to get really complex. When we put a bunch of tissues together, we get organs. Does anyone have an example of an organ? You can go ahead and say it out loud. No one's gonna judge you for talking to the camera. I'm asking you the question after all. So, we have a few examples here that we'll be talking about later. We have hearts, we have our stomachs, and we have our lungs. Now, just one lung for here. When we put organs together, they will all do a similar job to keep the body working. So when an organ works together with another organ to complete a series of tasks, we call that an organ system. Examples of these might be the circulatory system, which pumps blood around the body, or your digestive system, which digests the food you eat and gets rid of the solid waste. So we're going to talk about several of these systems, organs, tissues, and cells as we solve some mysteries, some questions that we have. Like our first question, what color is the blood in your veins? Now you may have heard that blood is blue when it's inside of you. And in fact, if you look at your wrist, you may see blue or greenish veins. But what color do you see when you get a cut? you're going to see red, unless you're an alien, then you might not see red. But for humans, at least, we will see that red color. So some people say what is happening is that blood is being oxygenated or filled with oxygen, because that is what our blood is for. It is a transportation system. So we have two types of blood vessels. This will help us understand exactly how this happens, how we can have oxygen-rich and oxygen-poor blood. In our arteries, that oxygen-rich blood and blood with lots of nutrients is being delivered from our heart to cells all around the body that need it, just like we need to eat food. But each artery is a one-way street. You can't go back up the arteries to the heart, so deoxygenated or oxygen-poor blood and waste products move back to the heart in veins. And if you look in diagrams, these will also be shown in blue. So this is where we get complicated is oxygenated blood, often colored red in diagrams, and then deoxygenated blood, blue. Well, we have a little experiment here to find out because it's very hard to magic school bus style dive into our veins and actually explore. You need a lot of light, it's very expensive, it's very dangerous, and the technology really doesn't exist yet. So I am going to need a volunteer to help me perform our next experiment. Come on up, my friend. I'm going to have you stand right here. All right, face the audience. What is your name? Zachary. All right, everyone, this is Zachary. Now, Zachary is going to help me perform our experiment with our synthetic blood. Now, synthetic means not real. We made this in a lab, and it does have oxygen in it since this room has oxygen in it. So what we need to do is pull that oxygen out and see what it looks like with no oxygen. And we have made this incredible deoxygenation powder. Just see this white powder right here. So Zachary, what I'm going to have you do, take a scoop, put it in the beaker, and stir. Excellent. And what do we see? It is fizzing. It is fizzing, exactly. So we're going to get those bubbles. That is going to be the gas pulling out all of that oxygen leaving. Now, all those bubbles are going away, which means we don't have any more oxygen in it. So what color is it now? It is still red. It is still red, not blue. Correct. So that means that when there's no oxygen in our blood, it's red. All right, this leaves us with a bit of a puzzle. I'm gonna have Zachary go ahead and take a seat while we try to puzzle the rest of this out. 
Now, what we're seeing is deoxygenated blood in our veins is always red. And this is true. If you get your blood drawn, what you will see is a darker red. That is what is coming directly out of your veins. So, we always are going to have red blood, but in pictures, we see blue blood in veins, and in our wrists, we see blue or green blood. So, what on earth is going on? Well, we have this picture here that we can use to help demonstrate. We you take a look at this. So, what do you see here? We have these different colored balls and these different colored stripes. And what colors are they? Like a red, orange, a yellow, green, and a bluish purple. Now, what if I told you that all the balls are actually the same color? I know this is absolutely crazy, but if we take away the stripes in front of the balls, we'll be able to see that they are all the same color. Now, this is because your brain is incredibly easy to trick. It has to process a lot of information, so it likes to take shortcuts. So if you put other colors in front of something, it changes how we see them. Think of this if you ever look at an object in a store that looks different from when you take it home. The lighting and the colors around it are different. And if you think about this back to the blood in our veins, are we ever just looking at our veins? No, of course not. We are looking through our skin. So our skin in front of it is actually tricking our brain into seeing a colorful optical illusion of blue. So this is why we always have red blood in our veins, but we'll see blue when we look through our skin. Now, just because humans only have red blood doesn't mean different colors of blood aren't out there. Blood color is because of something called a hemochrome. That is a fancy word that literally means blood color. So the color of our blood is determined by that hemochrome, which is used to help carry oxygen. That's the main reason we have it, not just to make our blood pretty colors. So in humans, dogs, cats, squirrels, really any vertebrae, we're going to see hemoglobin. This is full of iron, which makes it red. Another thing that is made red by iron, the planet Mars. Now, what if we had something else? And there are animals that do have other chemicals in their blood. We're going to demonstrate this with some new synthetic blood, this time synthetic octopus blood. And I'm going to need another volunteer. Come on up, my friends. All right. What is your name? Hi, I'm John. This is John, everyone, and John is going to be helping us with our next experiment. Now, just like our experiment with Zachary, we have some synthetic blood. This time, it is synthetic octopus blood. Now, octopus blood is clear when it is deoxygenated or doesn't have oxygen in it. So, what I want you to do is just simply add our oxygenation liquid okay. to our synthetic octopus blood and see what happens. Go ahead and give that a stir. Oh and what do you see? Oh, I see that it's turning blue. Exactly, it is turning blue. So octopus blood, once you add oxygen to it, actually turns blue. And we see this in other invertebrates like mollusks as well. You can go ahead and take a seat, John. Thank right. you so much. Now the reason we see this blue blood in octopuses and squids and mollusks and other invertebrates is because their hemochrome is hemocyanin instead of hemoglobin, which we have. Hemocyanin doesn't have iron, but copper. And copper, when it oxidizes or is exposed to oxygen, turns blue green. So their blood will look different. Now, there are other colors of blood we see with animals too. There are some salamanders and insects that have pink, green, or even purple blood. So even though we always have red blood running through our veins, we see many different colors throughout the animal kingdom. All right, now that ends up being a very long question. And sometimes the simplest question, like what color is this stuff running through your veins, can take a lot to answer and bring up a lot of new questions. And sometimes questions have more than one answer, like this next one, how do we get sick? Now, what we're going to look at is the main causes. So what do you think, what makes us sick? We have germs, especially viruses and bacteria. We call these in science and medicine pathogens. Now what these pathogens are going to do is try to get into your body and attack it. So they're going to attack the cells, the tissues, and stop them from working or doing their job right. So this is going to make you feel really sick. 
But there are other ways you can feel sick too because your body doesn't just let these pathogens come in and attack. Instead, you have something to fight back. Does anyone know what that is? You have your immune system. Now this is a complicated system that's job is to detect, deflect, and destroy any pathogens that get into your body. They may raise your body's temperature so you have a fever or thicken your mucous membranes and your nose, making it harder for various things to enter. Some of the things you feel when you get sick, like a stuffy nose or a fever, can be caused by your body's own immune system trying to make you feel better. Now, the immune system is the most complicated system in the body, so we're just going to cover a few of the parts. First, you have things like your skin and the mucous membranes, like your snot that I mentioned before. Those are going to help keep things from getting into your body in the first place. If something does get in, you have some specialized cells. Some of them are called white blood cells. These big globs will gobble up anything that comes into their path. Their job is to detect and destroy. And you have another type of cell, which is my personal favorite, your B cells. What your B cells are going to do is something very unique. They are your acquired immunity. They have memory. So if they're introduced to a cell or a pathogen, they'll go up, shake its hand, say, hi, I'm a B cell, nice to meet you. You are a red blood cell, I'm not going to attack you. Oh, but you're the chicken pox, well, I'm gonna attack you. And they will attack the chicken pox every time they see it. This is why you can only get the chicken pox once. It is because your B cells, your acquired immunity, are going to remember it and get rid of it before it can make you sick every single time. It's a little complicated, right? Now, the immune system is very difficult, so we're going to simplify this a bit with a little game. So I'm going to need two volunteers, so I'm going to have John and Zachary join me again. Excellent, very nice. So we are going to play a little game with our bean bags here. Zachary, you are going to be my immune system. So your job is going to be to destroy or deflect our pathogens by throwing them onto our cornhole. You don't have to get them through the hole. Now, our red and green are our viruses and our bacteria. Our blue and yellow are things that are already in our body. Because if you think about it, your body is not just pathogens. Your body is not just a whole thing of viruses and bacteria. You have particles of the food you eat and you have your own cells as well. So we want to leave those alone. So you will have one minute to throw the correct bean bags onto the cornhole. Sound easy enough? Easy enough. Maybe a little bit too easy. Yeah. I'm thinking so. So there's a big difference between you and your cells. What do cells, or what does Zachary have that cells don't have? It's only one difference. That's it. It is your eyeballs. So we are going to blindfold you. And that is where John comes in. Cells don't have eyes, but they do communicate through chemical signals. So what John is going to do is tell you which bean bags to throw and where to throw them. Sound easy enough now? All right, we'll go ahead and have you put this on. And I'm going to have you take two steps forward. Stop right there. And turn to your right. All right, if you bend down, you'll feel the bean, fill the bean bags on your right side, right by your foot. Perfect. All right, excellent. I will give you one minute in three, Two, one, That's go. Bean bag. Drop it. Green. That's good. Yes. All right. You need to aim a little to your left on your next toss. That's good. Yes, that is a green bean bag. All right. So still a little to your left and a little less power. That's a red. All one. right. We have about 20 yes, seconds up. left, or 20 seconds in. That one's a blue one. Do not use it. That one's a yellow one. Do not use it. That one's a blue one. Do not use it. That one's a blue one. Do not use it. Perfect, red one. Pop, back a little too much power. About 30 that's seconds good. left. All right, you gotta use a lot less power. That, that's a green one. That is a good one. Oh. Now you gotta use less power than that last one. Yellow one. All right, so we have to bring in more bean bags. These are all red and green, so they're all good. 
All right, about 10 oh, seconds power. left. Perfect, you got it on. Perfect, that's the correct amount of power. You got this, excellent. Uh, perfect. All right, three, two, power. one, time. Excellent, you can go ahead and take off your blindfold and let's see how we did. So overall, we did very, very well. We got most of our bacteria and viruses onto the cornhole eventually, which is true because if your body doesn't get rid of them the first time, they don't, your body just doesn't stop. It's going to round everything up again and keep trying to get rid of it. Except we did get a little bit confused. Chemical signals and our immune system had a bit of a miscommunication at one point. So I'm going to go ahead and have Zach and John take a seat and we'll look through what all of this means. So overall, our body is really healthy, but you can have these mixed signals that might cause you to miss something, but the body is still going to keep fighting it. But what if our chemical signals had told our immune system to throw one of our yellow or blue bean bags? Well, our yellow bean bags are things we eat or things we breathe in. Is anyone here allergic to anything? If you go outside, does your nose start to run? Maybe you get watery eyes? Now, I really do, especially at this time of year in the spring. So what we'd see if we do this, your immune system is going to react to that object and it's going to flag it. Those B cells are going to remember it. They've gone up, shaken the hand and said, hi, you're pollen, nice to meet you. I'm never going to forget you and I'm going to attack you every time I see you. This is going to make your nose run and possibly even give you a fever or a cough. This is how you get seasonal allergies or allergies to food. And what if your body starts attacking its own cells? So this can get even worse. This is how you can develop a lot of autoimmune diseases. Your own immune system starts doing the very thing the pathogens are trying to do, attack your own body. So this can cause things like diabetes, arthritis, and a lot of other very well-known autoimmune diseases. So we always want to make sure we keep our immune system healthy. This is also a great reason when they are available to get vaccines. They boost your B cells, expose your B cells to things and get you over the infection early. All right, now getting sick is no fun. So we wanted to end this show on a lighter note. It's gonna be a real gas. Now, we are going to talk about our digestive system and answer the question, why do we burp and fart? Now, this happens because of that digestive system, especially because of our stomach and our intestines. We'll start with burping. So, when you eat, you're going to be swallowing food from your mouth through a long tube of muscle called your esophagus, and it's going to go into your stomach. But, chances are, you are also going to be swallowing some air. And this isn't great because that air wants to go back up. It doesn't like to move through the body. So the air will push its way out of your stomach, back up your esophagus, back to your mouth, and you have a burp. So burps are just trapped air moving back out of the body. Farts are a little bit more complex. Sometimes a little bit of trapped air from the stomach will get pushed out the back into your intestines, travel all the way down, out through the very end, and you have a bottom belch. But this is actually rare. What we see instead is something very different. I'm going to need another volunteer to help me out. Welcome back, Zachary. All right, now Zachary, nice and simple. All I need you to do here this flask is going to be your intestines. And we have some nice food up here. So I just want you to dump the food into the intestines and then let go of the balloon. Excellent. And what do we see? It is fizzing. It is fizzing and what else? Um, the, balloon. the balloon is inflating. You're thinking about that a little bit too hard. The balloon is inflating. So when you eat foods that have a lot of starch in them, like beans or lots of sugars or anything that just you eat at all, your bacteria inside your intestines, good bacteria that help us out, are going to digest that food, like what happened down here. That is going to make a chemical reaction, which makes gas. 
Now in our balloon, we have carbon dioxide, which we do have in our bodies. We also have some methane that gets produced. I'm gonna have Zachary take a seat for this next part because it's going to get a little bit stinky. Now, we wanted you to really experience what it feels like to toot your own horn. What it feels like when you feel the call of the wild burrito. So, do I have anyone who thinks they are very good at making fart noises? Come on up, John. I'll come back on up. All right. So, John, you are going to be my gaszilla. Every time I pull on my stink blaster, okay. I would like you to make a fart noise. Okay. All right. In three, two, one. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. All right, thank you so much for joining us here at the Out of Your Body Experience. My name is Anna, and I was joined here today by John and Zachary. We hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye, everyone.